Hey guys, welcome to Hugh Shang Tutorials. If you're new here, I am a Grandmaster Terran, Zerg, and Protoss player, and I've been playing StarCraft for the past 10 years. Today we're going to be taking a look at a very standard ZVZ opening that's going to give you quite a few drones going into the mid game, but maybe more importantly, keep you safe. Before we get into the guide, if you guys are interested in personalized one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can find my website at the bottom, www.hushangcoaching.com. Alright, let's get into the guide. So I'm going to play this on normal speed just so we can make sure we don't miss anything. At the very beginning of the game, you're going to make a drone, you're going to send your overlord across the map and you're going to place it somewhere over in this general area with the goal of seeing your opponent's hatchery timing. And this is going to keep you safe um, in a lot of circumstances. For example, if you see a hatchery that's maybe just started or um, not quite as far along as your hatchery, then this is going to be an indication that you're getting cheesed. So we'll take a look at that again once the Overlord actually gets over here. Next thing you're going to do is make an overlord. Now, if you're new to StarCraft, you're going to want to be looking at your supply up in this top right corner. And the metric we're going to be using is this left number. So your first overlord is going to be on 13 supply. So when this left number gets to 13, which it already is, you're going to save up money till you have enough for an overlord, which is 100 minerals. So as soon as we get to 100 minerals, we're going to make that overlord. Next thing you're going to be doing is making a drone. This is going to put you up to 14 supply, so 14 out of 14. We're kind of just ignoring that right number. Now there's going to be a bit of a pause here. Once this overlord completes, we're going to get some additional supply, and we're going to make two more drones. So here's the overlord completing. We're adding on two drones. And then our next building is a 16 hatchery. So again, we're making sure this left number gets up to 16. And then we're also waiting for enough money to build a hatchery. Hatcheries are 300 minerals. So we're going to send this drone a little bit early. You don't want to wait till you have 300 exactly because your drone is going to need to travel over here. And then by the time you get here, you're going to have 400 minerals. So you could have just got that hatchery a little faster. You can see this drone kind of arriving right as we get 300 minerals and making that on 16. Next thing you're going to do is continue droning. We're going to make three more drones. Um, and then if you want to be fancy, you can send these uh, to specific spots. So the first drone is going to go to the mineral line. The second drone is going to go to the gas geyser. And the third drone is going to go to wherever you want to put your spawning pool. So as you can see here, I have one to the mineral line, one to the gas, and one over here where I'm going to place my pool. Very important, don't keep droning while we are making these buildings because we want to get this gas on time and we also want to get the, uh, the pool on time. But as soon as you have the pool, we're going to continue droning. Maybe it's a good time to mention that this build is perfectly safe for any cheeses. So if this feels a little more greedy than you're used to, um, that's pretty normal for, for new or even um, average level players, but this is totally safe. You can, you can defend any early pools with the right technique. Okay, let's continue droning. These next three drones are all going to be rallied into the gas geyser. And the idea here is we want to mine as much minerals as possible. So we've saturated the mineral line to 16 out of 16, and this is going to give us plenty of minerals to, uh, to explode our economy. But we need some gas, we need to get the speed upgrade, we need to get banelines later, um, but we just don't want to rush those things. <clears throat> After we've finished making these three drones and rallying them into the gas, we are going to make an overlord on 19. Actually, I see that I've missed something. <laughs> So let's, let's address that. Um, this second overlord, I said the first one should be rallied to this area, but the second overlord also has a very specific place in the Zerg versus Zerg matchup. Um, and that overlord needs to go right here. And so that's going to be your 13 overlord. So the first one you make 
is going to go right here. And the first one that's already made is going to go here. And you can adjust this for different maps. It's basically just outside your opponent's natural and just outside your opponent's third base. And so the purpose of this overlord, the one that's covering your opponent's third, is going to be, of course, to see this third base whenever it goes down. So you're going to have knowledge how many bases your opponent's on. Um, but you're also going to see whatever Zerglings leave their base. So if Zerglings are coming uh, from their main and their natural and they're trying to sneak around this overlord, which is going to be positioned here, it's going to see any Zerglings leaving this way. So if any, if any Zerglings try to sneak around that one and come out here maybe or out here, you're going to see those as well. So basically, no matter what your opponent does, if he makes units and he leaves his base with them, you're going to see them. And that's pretty much... Uh, the most fundamental thing you can be doing in ZvZ because if your opponent makes units and you don't realize and then they just arrive at your base like 50 Zerglings you're pretty much dead <laughs> you kind of need a little bit of advanced warning to make some banelings and know if it's okay to drone or not to drone okay so that's your first two overlords we're going to make a, another one here on 19 And we're going to place this one somewhere outside your um, first three bases. So one, two, three. So this overlord could maybe go here or here or here. Basically anywhere that's going to give you a little bit of extra vision at the entrances of your base. Okay. After that, you're going to hold on to your larva. You're not going to spend this larva because if they happen to be doing any early pressure, you're going to need this to defend. Once your pool finishes, this is a really important time, means so you're going to be watching for this pool to finish. And when it does, you're going to start two queens and two sets of zerglings. So that's four zerglings total, but two sets. You can see me starting the zerglings up here. Two queens. And then we're back to droning for a little bit. You might see some players take an early hatch, but this is a, a bit of an extra safe build. So we're going to take that after these um, these lings and queens. <clears throat> Once we get to 100 gas, you're going to grab Zergling Speed. Zergling Speed costs exactly 100 gas. And you're going to pull one guy off the gas. So we're trying to mine as much as possible to get this out, but now that we have it started, we don't really need that much gas for a little bit. Um, we're going to need quite a bit more minerals to uh, expand again and kind of set up our economy. So let's pull one guy off. And then the next building that's important, you can see me droning a bit, but the next building that's important is a hatchery, a third base on 30 supply. So you can basically just be watching up here at the top right. Obviously you won't have your opponent's supply up here as well. You'll just have yours. And you can watch till this left number gets to 30, and then you're going to make your third hatch. In fact, probably something most most players don't know when they're starting out is most high level players are looking at two spots in their screen they're looking up here at the top right and they're looking down here at the bottom left and a lot of the um, attention is in these two corners rather than the biggest part of the screen sorry I'm trying to trace this the biggest part of the screen where you think people would be looking they're actually not looking there for the most part okay grabbing this third hatch on 30 queen birth successful once your queens pop, you're going to do injects. One inject here, one inject here. You should have exactly enough energy to do that. And then after your injects, you're going to make your bane lane nest. So that should be around 245 to 250, somewhere in that area. And then we're pretty much safe. So this is pretty much the opening. Getting our Baneling Nest at a good time, 245, making sure we have a decent drone count, um, and kind of setting up our overlords in good positions. All right, fantastic. So I think that's all for this guide. I'll probably do another one just after this, talking about how to transition into the mid game safely. But this is a very standard opening. Hope you guys enjoy the tutorial, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.